Near the end of World War II, many senior figures in the German military believed that Hitler's control would lead them to defeat. Many sought defeat to occur only in a matter of time, especially after the Russian victory at Stalingrad. Some radicals in the German military believed that the Allies would accept negotiation with regards to conditional surrender if Hitler had been killed. Because of this, the bomb plot was created. Hitler, being a hated, notorious leader, was aware that he and his comrades in his inner circle had to be cautious of assassination attempts. Reinhard Heydrich had been assassinated in Prague, and in 1942, Joseph Goebbels had almost been killed. Because of this, Hitler was exceptionally preventful in protecting himself. He did not let anyone near him carry a weapon and had very tight security around him at all times. Therefore, an attempt to kill him would have to be very well planned out. There were many principal figures in the July bomb plot. Some men included Ludwig Beck, Wilhelm Canaris, and Hans Oster. But the key figure in the July bomb plot was Count Klaus von Stauffenberg. In June 1944, he was promoted to full colonel and made the chief of staff to General Fromm. This made it mandatory for him to meet with Hitler daily, which gave the conspirators insight on their assassination. On Stauffenberg's first meeting with Hitler, the German army found out that they could face total destruction on their eastern and western fronts. Hence, speed became the main factor in the conspirators' assassination. Henning von Treskos, another one of the conspirators, sent this message to Stauffenberg. The assassination must be attempt at any cost. Even should that fail, the attempt to seize power in the capital must be undertaken. We must prove to the world and to the future generations that the men of the German resistance dared to take the decisive step and to hazard their lives upon it. Compared with this, nothing else matters. In early July, a series of arrests took place in Germany by the Gestapo. They arrested other conspirators, and Stauffenberg didn't know how much they knew about their own bomb plot. Along with this, officers moved from Eastern Front to Western, Western to Eastern. Field Marshal Rommel, who had been critical of the way Hitler ran the war, was severely injured in this transferring. With the scenario of this getting out of hand, Stauffenberg decided that Rommel was the perfect person to carry in a bomb to Hitler's meeting. No one would suspect the severely disabled war hero. Stauffenberg received orders that the next staff conference with Hitler was to start at 12.30 on July 20th. He and his fellow conspirators placed the bomb in a map room, hiding the bomb in a briefcase against the table that Hitler would be using. After this was done, Stauffenberg went to his staff car. An explosion occurred in the map room. The time was 12.42. The SS guards believed that an air raid was taking place. Regardless, Stauffenberg left the meeting place to Berlin. Although the bomb plot seemed to be foolproof, something miraculous happened. Just before the bomb was due to explode, an officer attending the briefing had moved the briefcase to the other side of the table. Because of this, the blast was directed away from Hitler, who survived with only a cut to his hand and damaged eardrums. Hitler was recorded saying, I have escaped death miraculously, and I will crush and destroy the criminals who have dared to oppose themselves to the providence and me. All the conspirators, including Stauffenberg, were arrested. They were later shot by a firing squad. All in all, if the conspirators' bomb plot had succeeded, the Germans could have escaped total defeat, saved thousands of lives, and put an end to World War II. The bomb plot also could have gotten rid of German tension with opposing countries in the near future.